How do doctors think? My name is Mike Molnar, I'm an internal medicine doctor, and in this video, I hope to show you guys some information about how doctors analyze patients and arrive at diagnoses. One strategy we have is called the differential diagnosis. This is where a patient may come to us with a specific complaint. Let's say that it's chest pain. There's a lot of different things that can cause chest pain. So to start thinking about this, we form a differential diagnosis. This is where we think about several different potential causes and I try to separate these into different categories. And a mnemonic I like to use is SPIT. We like to spit on the diagnosis. What this stands for is S, stands for serious. So for example, with chest pain, we might think of a heart attack or aortic dissection, maybe a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot in the lung. These are really serious and dangerous causes of chest pain. And because of that, we wanna think of these first. Then P stands for probable. Heart attacks really aren't that common in the big scheme of things. There's much more probable causes of chest pain, things like acid reflux or musculoskeletal causes like inflammation of the chest wall. Then I stands for interesting. We call these zebras. Always want to think about a few very unusual causes of a patient's complaint. So for example, the chest pain, could it be Libman Sachs endocarditis from undiagnosed lupus? Yes, but that's very rare. It's an interesting cause, but certainly not a common one. And then T stands for treatment. So after we think about a few potential causes of a patient's symptoms, we start to consider how we might work these up and what sort of treatments we may recommend for our patients. So then once we've come up with a differential diagnosis, we have a few different potential causes of our patient's symptom in mind, we can then interview our patient and get more information. I start out every medical interview the same way. I ask my patient, what brought you into the hospital? What sort of symptoms have you been experiencing? But then, because I already have a differential diagnosis in mind, I will ask more specific questions that get at each of the possible underlying etiologies or causes of a patient's symptom. For example, if I'm worried about a heart attack, I may ask, is this chest pain a pressure sensation? Does it radiate to the shoulder or the jaw? Is it worse with exertion? These are all signs that the pain could be coming from the heart. On the other hand, let's say I'm worried about a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot in the lung. I may ask things like, have you recently been on a long plane flight or had any prolonged periods of immobilization? This increases the risk that a clot could form in the leg and then get mobilized into the lung. In this way, by already having a few different potential diagnoses in mind, it helps to tailor the way I speak with patients and helps me decide what type of specific questions to ask. But the usefulness of the differential diagnosis doesn't just stop with the interview. It also is relevant in the physical examination. Depending on what sort of diagnoses I have in mind, this will determine which parts of the physical examination I need to really emphasize. Going back to our example of chest pain, since I'm worried about a heart attack or a possible blood clot in the lung, I will listen very carefully to both the heart and the lungs. I'll still do a complete physical examination, I'll examine the belly, I might do a brief neurologic examination, but the emphasis will be really on the cardiovascular system, listening to the heart, listening to the lungs, checking the extremities for any signs of swelling, which can also be a sign of heart failure. But in this way, forming a differential diagnosis ahead of time makes a big difference for how the physical examination is done. Oh, and it's not over yet. Then, based on the findings from the interview and the physical examination, this will then determine if there are any other tests that need to be ordered. Going once again, back to our example of chest pain, for this condition, if my interview and the physical examination have caused me to be concerned about a potential heart attack, the next test I will order is an EKG. This looks at the heart rhythm and can also give me some information if there's part of the heart that's not getting enough blood, which is what causes a heart attack. And finally, as we gather more data from the interview, the physical exam, and any other tests or imaging studies, we can eventually start to narrow down the differential diagnosis and finally arrive at the correct diagnosis. And then from that, come up with a treatment plan that is custom tailored to the individual patient. That's just an example of how a differential diagnosis or coming up with different potential causes of a patient's symptoms ahead of time can help guide the interview, physical exam, and the rest of the process of evaluating patients. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.